in this little bit in the section uh, in in this chapter uh, we're looking at Plato's theory of forms in this uh, section we're gonna look at a few questions the first well quite simply what are the forms I haven't really gotten to that point just yet second question is where are the forms now we keep talking about these things these forms causing other things to exist but where are they doing that from is it up there or in here where is it uh, third question is what is the relationship of the forms to particular things so we have the form of tree what's the relationship of the form of tree to this tree uh, next is what is the relationship uh, are, what, are, what are the relationships between the forms how are they related to each other and then finally probably the biggest question of all is how do we know about the forms we'll take a look at each of these in turn So one important question to ask ourselves right away is what are the forms? Well, remember uh, Plato's analogy of the cave. Right? There's a difference between appearance and reality. Right now I have lots of appearances to me. I see greens and browns. I see the light coming from the sky. I feel the temperature of the air. It's a little lukewarm right now. These are all appearances. Well, what's real is not the appearances. So what's real? It's, it's the forms. These trees at one point did not exist. At some point they will cease to exist. But even once the trees cease to exist, there's still the reality. And the reality is the form. Destroy these trees and the universal the tree, the form of tree still exists. The definition, the meaning what it is things have come and gone through your life they've uh, disappeared but you still remember these things the meaning of those things still exists well in Plato's mind the only way that we can talk sensibly about trees when I say things like trees use sunlight to produce energy the only way that makes any sense is if there is the universal of tree if there's the form of the tree. Otherwise, what am I talking about? I could talk about, you know, that tree, and I could talk about that tree maybe, and I could talk about this tree over here, and I could say that tree uses sunlight to produce energy. Well, that doesn't cover all trees. It doesn't even begin to. And that's precisely the business that we're in when we use forms, when we use universals. We talk about tree all the time. Well, in Plato's mind, that's not going to make any sense unless there is this thing, the tree. Trees, tree knits, the form of tree. These trees will come and go, but the form will remain. So the form is permanent, eternal, immaterial. These trees are made of stuff. Forms are not. I could ask you to imagine the form of tree. Well, you'd probably think of maybe that tree right there, or maybe this tree that's behind me over here, or maybe imagine some other tree. That's not the form of tree. The form of tree is not seen. What you're imagining is images. That's the first step of uh, knowledge, remember. That's the first kind of knowledge, it's just imaging. You can't imagine the form of tree. The form of tree is understood. What you imagine is what you get from the senses. The form of tree is what allows you to know that these are trees. The form of tree is what allows you to recognize a new tree as a tree. Yeah. Without the form, Plato thinks it doesn't make sense that you can recognize things as trees and things as not trees. So what are the forms? They're immaterial. They're the essence, the real thing 
of these individual particular things. It's what's really real. And when you start to get the form of tree, that's when you step out of the cave and you get uh, uh, thinking. Without the form of tree, you might be able to recognize that some things are trees, but that's just a mere opinion. You won't know trees until you understand the form. The second question we deal with is where are the forms? I know in class, whenever I refer to the forms, I always kind of point up. I always say, they're up there. Well, that's technically incorrect. Forms are immaterial. They're not made of stuff. Only things that are made with stuff have location. We even talk this way when we, when we talk about uh, the universe, that space which is a function of location, doesn't extend beyond the universe. It's the same way with the forms. The forms have no matter. They're not physical, they're immaterial. So, forms are not located anywhere. Now, it might be a little bit hard to grasp, but think about it. Right? We already talk about plenty of immaterial things. Right? Uh, forces are one. And yeah, forces are stronger and weaker in various locations, but technically forces exist everywhere. They're immaterial too. The laws of nature. The laws of nature are also immaterial. They don't exist anywhere. They don't even exist in your textbooks. Those are just expressions, representations, symbolic representations of the laws of nature. Numbers. Numbers don't exist anywhere. Same thing with the forms. They're immaterial, so they don't have location. Another important point about the forms, has to, or another kind of question about the forms regarding where they are, is related to whether they're here. Whether it's in, quote-unquote, this world. Well, again, the answer is, they're immaterial. They don't rely upon these things to exist. These things come and go. The forms remain. Well, if that's so, then the form isn't here. It's not in the matter. If it's not in the matter, the forms exist independently of these things. And I can't find the form here. All I find is this particular object. But now, if they don't exist here, then they're separately existing things. Separate from all of this. So we've looked at what a form is, and we've looked at where a form is. And the answer to the first contributes to the answer to the second. Next we're going to look at the relationship between the form and the particular thing. Well, there's three ways that this is described. The first is that the particular thing participates in the form. Now, we're not given a really great description of what participates means. It's probably very metaphorical speak, so it's not going to do us a whole lot of good. Another way it's described is that the form causes the essences of all these things. Now, the idea behind an essence is an essence is what makes a thing what it is. No tree has the essence of a dog, and vice versa. So the idea is that the forms cause the essences of all these things. The form is responsible for what these things are. Again, appealing to this idea of reality. The third one is that these things are copies of the form. I'm not, the best, I'm not the biggest fan of the use of this word. I mean, the, the closest idea that we have to copies have to do with like Xerox machines or when you uh, copy uh, a file onto a flash drive. And with a copy, you know, you get something that looks pretty much like the original. But again, that's not the case with forms. Forms don't look like anything. Yeah. 
So this tree may be caused by the form, but it doesn't look like the form. The form is comprehended. The tree is seen. The memory of the tree is imagined. Other trees are imagined. But it's a form that allows you to do this. But what all these three are, all these three are trying to get to is that the forms are responsible for all these particular things. These things are all dependent on the form. Some kind of dependence is causal. What? It's not real clear. But the idea is, and again, here's Plato kind of pushing on his notions about reality, that the forms are more real than these things, because the forms are what cause these things to exist. <music>